No, I mean, we're, we're in the process of that. The good news is this has been going on longer than people think, right? It's just getting to the U.S. now, but it really started in January. That's when, you know, global equities peaked, uh, had global euphoria. And since then, it's been kind of like a domino effect, or we call it the rolling bear market. And now it's getting to the U.S. That was the call we made this summer, was that we're finally going to get to the tech stocks, the growth stocks, and small caps. And look, there's been a lot of damage now. So I would argue 80% of it's probably done at this point. I would argue from a price level standpoint, we, th we still think 2450, 2500 would be a very good entry point for the S&P 500. And we think we probably get there sometime in the next uh, four to eight weeks. But it's still a long, time, a long way to, to sort of go down. I mean, the other day when we had this bounce, you had a note, you called it a dead cat bounce. You said risk reward remains unattractive for U.S. equities. Yeah, and last week we had that big rally and, you know, into a week, <laughs> kind of like today, quite frankly. Is this a um, dead cat bounce again? Yeah, this one may last a little bit longer because we got some technical things in the last few days. I mean, we really got flushed yesterday where we could bounce for four or five days. Plus, we got a few good earnings reports last night and we'll get more tonight, which could, you know, spark some hope. But, yeah, I think ultimately this will fail, probably around 2750, best case 2780. And then we can make a next leg down towards those targets I mentioned a minute ago. So then you wouldn't be a buyer of the dip, you know, what we've seen in any of the growth names, uh, discretionary, tech, you wouldn't be buying? Well, look, obviously there are stocks that are going to be, they're already bottoming out. And I would argue that some of those, most of the, the real opportunities are probably overseas, which have been in a bear market now for nine or 10 months. Um, I think the growth stocks are probably still one of the most more vulnerable areas because that's the last part that has to go. I would be looking at some of the areas that have already been beaten up, maybe some of the cyclicals that have really been taken out to the woodshed and, quite frankly, are pricing in a recession at this point, many of them. So if tech has led you lower, you think tech has to lead you higher? Uh, not necessarily, Scott. I think I mean, it's such a big part of the market. It, it will have to participate. But I don't know if it's going to lead because ultimately what we've seen is this rolling bear market. It may go in reverse now. Ultimately, we think the main issue for the market is liquidity. And we've been saying this all year that the, the reason for this bear market has been that global liquidity is drying up. The Fed has been tightening. ECB is now tapering. At the same time, we're doing more supply on the Treasury side. That's what tipped us over in October when rates shot up. So, so if the Fed backs off, which we think they ultimately will if we decline further, then we go in reverse. Then you go back to the riskiest stuff that probably get hit first. I mean, so financial conditions are tightening, right? Rates have been going up. The market's been going down. You think December is a formality? I think December is still very much on the table. There's no reason to make that call now. Our, our official view, by the way, is they do December and then two more next year, but not if the financial conditions continue to get worse. So I think the, the more realistic assumption, if we're right about our equity call and financial conditions get tighter, the Fed will have to signal something in December that maybe they'll be ending sooner than people think today. They're not making that call now. They're you not think, doing that now. Do you think Powell caused this correction with his no, comments I, on the I mean, look, this started long before. You could argue that... The Fed, before he even joined, started us on this path. I would argue the fourth quarter of 17 was the, was the change for the Fed. That's when they began balance sheet reduction. Janet Yellen obviously retired. She set the course every other meeting, and Powell just assumed that. So that the Fed is an institution. They're doing their job. I'm, they're not making a mistake. They're doing their job. And look, we're just happening to tip over sooner than maybe some people thought we were going to. You think the tariffs are having a more negative impact on the economy than the administration expected? Uh, I think that the administration uh, is clearly pressing forward on tariffs in a way as if it's not going to have much of an impact. But it uh, already is, though, isn't it? Well, I think that's right. So I don't know what they're I don't know what they're anticipating on the economy, but clearly tariffs are going to have an impact on margins. We've we've made this call for a while. This is a supply chain issue for uh, the tariffs are a supply chain issue, and that's going to create a margin problem potentially in 2019. So it's not just about financial conditions, Scott. It's about the peak in growth, not necessarily a recession, but a peak in growth. And tariffs add additional risk to how far that earnings decline you know, happens next year.